In this video, I'd like to talk about upgrading a computer hard drive to a solid state drive. The solid state drive I'll be using is the Samsung 860 EVO 1TB. On my first try to transfer my operating system over, I decided to try Samsung's data migration software. The website bragged about how easy it is to use. After downloading it and launching it, the software immediately gave me a warning message saying that it could not copy open files. Coincidentally, the only open files I had at the time was the Windows operating program that this software was running on. So I deleted that piece of software travesty and went looking for another option. What I actually found was a piece of free software called Clonezilla. Well, being a Godzilla fan, of course I had to look into this. This software actually works. Not only can you make an exact copy of another drive, you can burn images of hard drives for a backup. The only drawback is it's Linux based. Linux is a non-Windows software operating system, so it's not real intuitive for Windows users. But as long as you have a guide, like this video, it's pretty easy to use. I just realized I use a term some people may not know the meaning of. Image file. An image file is an exact copy of an entire hard drive at a moment in time when the file was created. The file is compressed so it takes less room than the original hard drive and it can be used to create an exact duplicate of that hard drive. Some of the reasons why you may want to do this is to replace a failing hard drive, upgrade a hard drive to a solid state drive, recover from a major catastrophe like a virus or ransomware, or if you like me and you reload your operating system every year, it turns a two-day nightmare of dealing with software and drivers into a couple hour job. Well, let's get on with it. This video will have four sections. I'll have links in the video description in case you want to skip straight to a particular section. Part one will be booting directly into your Clonezilla operating system, hooking up the external drive so that you can burn your image file to it, and then burning the image to that external drive. Part two also boots into Clonezilla, Hook up the external hard drive your image is on, as well as your new hard drive. Then burn that image onto the new hard drive. Part 3. Remove your original hard drive, install the new one, and if the new hard drive is larger than the old, using a disk management software tool to gain access to the additional hard drive space. And finally, if you don't happen to have a copy of Clonezilla, I show you how to download it and make a bootable USB stick as well as a CD. The reason why I made two different versions of Clonezilla is because you have to boot into the Clonezilla software. This means the disk or USB is hooked up before you even turn the computer on. Then you access the computer BIOS and tell the computer to boot out of that device. Now most computers that I've used, the option of booting from a disk is normally there. However, booting from a USB stick isn't. It can be done, but it takes work. So I use whichever system is easiest, and once you're booted, they operate exactly the same. Before we get started with the hands-on, let me tell you about two other items you need to be aware of. As I said, Clonezilla is Linux-based. So when you're naming files, you cannot use any spaces in the names. If you do, Clonezilla will ignore the file name. And also, your hard drive that you're burning your image to has to be at least as big as, if not bigger, than the drive you're burning the image from. Okay, let's do some hands-on. While your computer is coming up, you do not want it to go into Windows. To prevent this from happening, you want to access your computer's BIOS. Each computer has a special key that you can press while it's booting. In my case, it's the escape key. One of the BIOS options is to boot from a different device other than your hard drive. You're presented with a list of input devices that the BIOS finds acceptable for input. Today, I'm going to use the CD since it's on the list and USB isn't. The vast majority of the entries you'll make when using Clonezilla will be hitting the enter key to accept the default. So let's do that. Hit the enter key. Enter to accept English as a language. Enter to accept standard keyboard layout. Bump the camera, reaching for the keyboard. Then hit Enter to start Clonezilla. Press Enter. Press Enter. At this point, you want to plug in the device you'll be burning your image to. They call that the repository. Wait five seconds, then hit Enter. Clonezilla will now scan your computer and look for every hard drive that's installed. Now, the top hard drive is the one that's installed in this computer. That's the one I'm trying to make a clone image of. 
the bottom hard drive is the external hard drive I'm burning the image to. Let me pause for a second to describe this screen to you. As you look at this list of hard drives, it looks like, what's the technical term? Gobbledygook. How do you tell which drive is which? Well, as it turns out, if you have access to the hard drive label, it becomes pretty clear. Here you can see the hard drive manufacturer and the hard drive model number. For absolute verification, they list the hard drive serial number. And finally, the size of the hard drive. If you can't gain access to this hard drive label, you at least know the brand name of the external drive you used. So, by default, the other drive is inside the computer. But if you have more than one internal hard drive, maybe you can make your selection off the size of the drives. Once you've verified CloneZilla can see both the drive you're writing to and from, hit Control c to move on. The next thing we're going to look for is all the partitions on these drives. Okay, what we have here is five different partitions. One, two, three, four, five. To figure out which partitions go to which drive, look at the manufacturer listed. You can see the first four are all Hitachi, so they belong to the main computer. The bottom one is my passport, which is the brand name of the external drive I plugged in. So that's the drive I'm writing to. Let me take a quick sidebar to clear something up. Why are there four partitions on this computer when the File Explorer shows only one partition? And that would be the C drive. Let's take a look at an example. Here's the laptop I'm making this video on. I can use the Disk Management tool to look at all partitions on this computer. What we see here is three different partitions. One, two, and three. The only one that shows up to the computer user is this drive right here, and that's the C drive. The other two drives are hidden, so nobody messes with them. Okay, back on subject. The purpose of this screen is to pick the partition that you're going to save your image file into. So my external drive, or the bottom one, my passport, luckily only has one partition, so it's easy to pick it. Scroll down to that drive and select Enter. Now that you've selected your partition, this screen wants to know what directory you want to save your image file in. To accept the default, tab down to the word done, and if you look here, the default is the root directory. Hit enter. Then enter again. Now that your destination has been selected, we want to start the wizard for copying. Hit enter to accept beginner. This screen is save the entire disk or part of the disk. Default the entire disk. Press enter. Now it's asking what do you want to call the file. The safest move here is accept their default, then change the file name later. This is because this program has special rules on file naming. Things like no spaces allowed, etc. Now it's asking which drive do we want to make the clone of. This is a simple decision since I only have one hard drive in this computer. But remember, if you have more than one drive, you can look at things like the size of the drive and the manufacturer to make an educated guess as to which one you're going to copy. Hit Enter to accept default compression. don't know what they're talking about, so again hit enter to accept the default. Now it's asking, do you want to check the saved image? Sounds like a good idea to me, so hit enter. Do you want to encrypt the save image? Default is no. Hit enter. We're almost there. What do you want the program to do after it's finished? Make your selection and you guessed it. Hit enter. Don't move too far away from the enter key. You're going to have to hit it a couple more times. Here's your obligatory. Your destination disk will be completely wiped. Indicate you completely understand by pressing the Y key and then enter. Okay, looks like we're finally burning and I have an hour and 20 minutes to go. Let's speed this up a little bit. We're all finished and the computer will now shut itself down. This is your solid state drive. 
So we need a way to hook up this SATA connector to a USB. Luckily, they sell adapters for this. I think this one cost about 12 bucks. I'll be making this copy using a laptop because it's extremely convenient. Plug in your Clonezilla boot software, your solid state drive, and finally the drive that has your image file on it. I'd like to point out that each of these items is plugged into a separate USB port. I know they have multi-port USB extenders. However, don't do this. Trust me, it will not end well. Okay, let's make a new hard drive. Hmm. Okay, we're going to scroll down, select enter. Okay, we need to scroll down to select your DVD. Hit enter. I want a default setting. Hit enter. Alright, we're going to accept default English. Enter for keyboard. Start Clonezilla. We'll be working with device image. Enter. Local device. Enter. And we're going to hit enter one more time after the hard drives are all hooked up. Here we go. We got the Hitachi, the onboard computer hard drive, the SSD drive, and the passport drive, which has my image file on it. And we want the... So that's the drives. So we're going to hit control C to close this screen out. Okay, so what we have here is this is the computer that I'm using's hard drive, and this is the same one, Hitachi. Now we have the recovery, Hitachi. So these three are the computer I'm using, and here's the backup image. This is the passport, two terabyte, which has my image file on it. And since that's the repository image, we need to go down and select it and hit enter. Okay, the current selected directory is the root directory, so I'm going to hit the right arrow key twice to hit done, and I'm press on. We're going to hit enter again. Since we're a beginner, we'll accept beginner as a default. Now, we need to come down here to restore an image to the local drive. This is the image that was created earlier. I will accept it by hitting enter. Choose the target disk. Now that's going to be this one terabyte. Drive. Hit enter. Uh, let's see. I checked the image before I actually when I recorded it, so I don't need to do that. So I'll go down and I will so hit enter. After it's all done, we will shut down. I'm gonna hit enter to continue. It's gonna ask me to enter again. Okay, we'll read that real quick. Warning, okay, here's the warnings. Now it wants you to hit the yes, the Y button, or the Y key, and then enter. And it's going to ask me a second time, are you sure? Y, enter. Oh. Are we doing it? It looks like it's working. Let's keep on going. It looks like we're up and running now. Our image is being burned onto our solid state device. And according to this, it'll be about an hour. So let's do a little fast forwarding.
And we're done. The image has been burned. Now that the hard drive has been copied, you want to switch the original hard drive out with your new solid state drive. First you want to remove the side panel on the computer. This is easily done on most computers except for Dell. I'm pretty sure Dell was going for the childproof version of the side panel. Anyway, this is a Hewitt Packard, so first you want to remove these two screws. Now, on the case containing the hard drives, you'll find these hieroglyphics. If you run them through the Rosetta Stone, you'll find out that the item number one listed here is actually telling you to push down this tab on the right hand side of the hard drive case. Now item number two is saying push the hard drive case in this direction. Let's give it a try. Now you can remove the entire hard drive case for easy access to install the new one. Disconnect the old hard drive cables. The old hard drive is held in by four screws. Remove them. Your new SSD hard drive is too small to actually be mounted properly. But we have an easy fix for this. You buy an adapter mounting bracket. I believe most desktops use the same mounting bracket, but if you're installing this in a laptop, you will have to purchase a bracket that's specific to that model of laptop. Install your new drive into the mounting bracket using four screws. Now you can slide the mounting bracket into your hard drive storage case and secure it into place with the four screws that you removed earlier. Now you can reinstall the hard drive storage case. Reinstall the first two screws. Finally, you can hook those two cables back up and you're done. If you're replacing the hard drive with the same size hard drive as the one you replaced, at this point you would be done. But what happens if you put a larger hard drive in? Well, I did that on my laptop, and let me show you what happened. When you take a look at the properties of this hard drive, it turns out to be exactly the same size as the drive I replaced, which was a 750 gigger. Well, as it so happens, I put a one terabyte drive in here. What happened to the rest of it? Well, Windows has a tool called Disk Management that can actually answer this question. To find this tool, go to the search menu and start typing in Disk Management. When you find it, open it. This program can show you some of your computer's little secrets. Here's my C drive and how much open room I have on that drive. And down here, it shows me there's hidden partitions, which copied across from the original drive. Now this stuff over here, labeled free space, is the remainder of my one terabyte drive. It's not currently being used by the computer. We're going to use this program to force the computer to recognize this extra space. There's many ways to do it, but I'm going to show you the simplest today. Right click on the free space to get yourself a menu. We want to select the top entry that says new simple volume. A wizard will launch and just accept all the defaults. You can name your new partition here or later. And there you have it. We now have a new drive E with an extra 232 gigs of storage space. From the Clonezilla website, you want to select the first item available, Alternative Stable. Now you want to change this pull-down menu from ZIP over to ISO. This ISO image is what allows you to make a bootable disk or USB stick. Ignore all these big green Start Now icons. You want to press this little button that says Download. Now in the lower left-hand corner, you can see that you're actually downloading the ISO file. When it's all done, you should be able to find the file in your download folder. Creating a bootable CD from your Clonezilla ISO image is extremely easy using Windows. You don't even need a third-party software. First, you want to put a blank writable CD into the burner. Right-click on your ISO image. You'll get a pull-down menu. Navigate to Open With, then select Windows Disk Image Burner. And that's pretty much it. Windows will convert that ISO image to a bootable CD. 
This is a Windows 7 computer, and I've also done it on Windows 10. This is the Belena website. It's amazingly simple. To download the program, click on the big green button. In the lower left-hand corner, you can see the progress of your program download. So, here I have the two pieces of software I downloaded. I want to put my USB stick into the computer, then double-click on the Belina software to start it. Once the software finally boots, it's extremely simple and easy to use. First, drag and drop your Clonezilla software onto this plus. Then press this button that says Flash, and you're done. Oops, actually this doesn't count since this is a Windows thing. Anyway, select Yes on that screen. Now sit back and enjoy the show. You should now be able to boot Clonezilla from this USB stick. Here's a quick heads up on this memory stick you just made. Clonezilla is Unix based. So if you try to look at the memory stick using Windows, it'll kind of freak out a little bit and give you a warning message saying it's an unformatted memory stick. So, the moral of this story, don't try to look at it using a Windows program. <laughs>